shows like yours on uh, GCN Live and your InfoWars program. It's going to be shows like yours that are going to dominate. And that's happening already. You were talking about how the newspapers are uh, going into the black hole, the, the black abyss of uh, non-profitability. Uh, as a matter of fact, they've literally shrunk in size now. They're actually smaller than they used to be, not only in thickness but also in width. So that's what we're doing is we're taking the mainstream media down and we'll continue to do that with alternative radio programs and Internet shows like yours. And that's where the mainstream media, they're either going to have to – we're going to have to drag them along. And in some cases, they are drag, being drug along. And thankfully, at least they're willing to at least – report on some of this news to where we can go in and read between the lines and decipher what's going on in the world. So well, I'll tell you br briefly about the very successful protest last night. I want to thank everybody for coming out there. It was great meeting folks. Um, I believe it's the same uh, 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 CBS black reporter. I mean, it, 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 I, I, I forgot his name, but he looked like the guy who was in the earlier CBS reports reading what the police told him, that, that it is illegal to have private sales. And I showed him the law and he said, well, look, don't get mad at us. We just reported what the police told us. but And then they did the right thing, actually. After I showed him the law, they actually put it on the news, and it was a 90% accurate report instead of 100% baloney. And the, the other newscasts were pretty fair. So the fact is, and it got their attention. When I bullhorned them and said, how dare you? you know, and, and, and People don't understand. When you kiss up to them and, and, and go along with it, it doesn't work. You've got to, when you're in the right, you've got to say, you are wrong. And here's the facts. And so that's a, a great victory. Well, it does take somebody calling them out on their actions. We have to. That's just like with this Rick Perry clip that uh, hopefully we'll show in a little bit where I caught up with him at Red's Indoor Range. I got word of it Friday from Robert Morrow. A friend of mine said Rick Perry's going to be at Red's Indoor Range on Friday afternoon. We went up there, and a bunch of us showed up. It was a, a cadre of patriots that were there, and we waited two hours. I want to thank Val and Rita because Val is the one that shot the video himself, and Rita was there as well, his wife. And we waited two hours to get that one minute of video uh, because they wouldn't allow us inside the store to try to get this uh, testimony out of Rick Perry that, to get his standing on where he stood on this uh, gun show being closed down. So anyway, we waited there patiently. We finally got him. And as you saw, I only had less than a minute there. Before got a minute, says, 11 seconds. Right, before he says, I got to go. And, uh, and not only that, his uh, bodyguard or aide or whoever it was actually physically grabs him and pulls him away. And I'm still there wanting to ask questions and continue the conversation but at least we got him on record my goal was to get him on record say hey rick perry where do you stand on this issue of the gun show being and, closed and, down and he waffled at first but at the end he said no my understanding is your understanding right. richard that this was intimidation that this was harassment that this was uh you know a lot of things and that and that they're looking into it so now it is on record because it's this illusion of the austin police chief and the batfe and the government saying no this is what we did, and, 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 you know, that's our story. We're sticking to it. Now the governor's saying, hey, this is wrong. But I want to talk about who we hope our next governor is going to be, Deborah Medina, right. in a moment. But let's go ahead and play this Rick Perry clip right now. Here's the video and audio of that. This is Red's Indoor Range. Yo. Hi, I'm Richard. I had at least one more question about the gun yeah, show issue. Yeah, on me. Is Robert explained it earlier. My understanding is, is that the gun show owner has not voluntarily given up his gun show. What has happened, evidently... Okay is a combination of APD and or BATFE nice. has gone and talked to the landlord of the building, okay. who is supposed to be HEB, right. and that HEB has come to the gun show owner and said, hey, your gun show's off, you're done. Yeah. And my understanding is that the gun show has done nothing wrong if right. they've been uh, okay. uh, convicted over or anything then, like that. That's my understanding, too. And, and my advice is find another venue. And, and find another venue? Sure. I mean, is it okay that the feds come in and pressure a no, landlord no, no, I don't, like I don't, that? I don't think that's fine at all. Okay. My deal is, though, uh, until we get that all cleared up, because I mean, there's a lot of he said, she said here, then I don't know what the facts are. Right. But if if, if the if the issue is, H E B won't let you have that site. I'll bet you there's somebody in this city that would dearly love to say, Well, I agree you know that's what? true. Here's what, here's what, and then go forward. And if they try it again, at that particular point in time, I'm not a lawyer, but I got to start saying that harassment's getting into play here. Well, that's I gotta go for harassment we pressure. Gotta Boom! So they 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 drag him off. That's but, right. But, but definitely, this has drawn national attention. They've now admitted the Justice Department came in and told the police department to do this. They ran the last gun show off. They now just shut this one down, and they've been caught telling different stories. Now uh, they're in a lot of trouble if people force the issue. Well, I look forward to our gun show in Austin being secured in perpetuity. Uh, you know, right here in Austin because of this event. I think we're really going to be victorious on that. We had the big rally yesterday that got the word out. You had the press reporting on it, 90% honest manner there. We've got Rick Perry here. Now, think about this. It's a month and a week before a primary election here in Texas 
The governor's race is a contested race, regardless of what anybody says. Rick Perry, you think at least he'd be grandstanding on this gun show issue and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to look into this. I'm going to take charge. We're going to see to it that the feds aren't down here interfering in our gun rights and our Second Amendment rights. He's so so sold out that he doesn't even do that. Here a month and a week away from a primary. So imagine, folks, if he gets in to the governorship once again and just continues on with the Bilderberg New World Order Agenda 21 uh, agendas just moving forward in the uh, police state. I mean, he's just going along with, right with every globalist program that they point our way, and he has definitely not stood up to the feds. He's definitely not stood up for states' rights, Tenth Amendment rights. We've pressed him. We had a big nullification rally only a week before that, and at that nullification rally, we are asking Rick Perry to stand up for the states' rights, Tenth Amendment rights. That's not happening either, and here we are, like I said, once again in a hotly contested Republican primary race for governor, and where is he on these issues? Silent. Well, here's the good news again, though. Uh, Deborah Medina, unknown a few months ago, um, comes on this radio show, some other bigger radio shows, gets the Ron Paul movement behind her. She's, a, you know, Ron Paul died in the wool, in, in the fetter. Uh, and she goes into that debate, and her numbers quadruple. She's now, if we had a few more months she'd be guaranteed to win but but you know it, it's that race but it sends a message whether she wins or loses she wins because now all these other candidates in governor's races and legislative races at the, at the state houses and federal races in congress house and senate and on top of what's happened in massachusetts with brown the message is the people want change and not just on the democrat side with republicans they want real uh, paleoconservative constitutionalist Property rights, Second Amendment, national sovereignty in the Fed, Deborah Medina. Uh, I mean, this is sending shockwaves across the country. I talked to national political pundits. They are following Deborah Medina very, very closely. And so everybody else now is signing up to run. And so we're going to get victories. Every time we stand up, we win. Uh, but uh, they weren't going to put her in the next below debate, even though uh, she was she was tracking nicely. Uh, they, they they changed the rules to say you have to be of a comparable office. You have to be a governor or a senator to be in a debate. That was obviously illegal, the way they changed. So they said, okay, because it's quasi-public-private. You know, they say it's their private debate, but it's a public service they're supposedly carrying out. So their lawyers told them back off, and they did back off within a week of our listeners and other listeners uh, and the Ron Paul folks out there. See, we built that revolution with Ron Paul as another platform, and as another platform, as another platform in the movement, the long view of history that uh, – that Jibber Griffin talks about. So tell us about Deborah Medina. Okay. Well, the website, medinafortexas.com, I'd encourage everybody to go there. But here's the thing is I don't think Deborah Medina can win. I don't believe Deborah Medina can win. I know Deborah Medina can win. Here are the numbers. I agree with you. If people don't like in the NFL, pick the team they think is going to win. That's right. That we need to get past That's that right. psychological mechanism. Well, listen, my grandmother, I don't know if you heard me talk about it earlier, she doesn't really listen to the show very often. It upsets her. So, and my and my, my mother was driving her around, you know, great grandmother to my kids, and uh, she was taking her to physical therapy last week, and it was she sharp as a tack. And my mother said, uh, "Who are you going to vote for in the Republican primary?" She's a Republican, and she said, uh, "Oh, Medina," uh, because it, everybody loved her. Talk radio is on fire with her. That's what's happening. The best thing that happened to us is KRA trying to black her out of this debate. It lit the fire behind the grassroots, which is something we really needed to happen because, folks, we had 1.3 million voters in the 2006 election that voted independent. 1.3 million voters. That, the, that cadre of folks right there is ready to vote out establishment candidates like Rick Perry. If those people come into this primary, they can win this race because guess what? Rick Perry only had 550,000 votes in the 06 primary 550,000 votes is all he had. He may very well split those votes with Kay Bailey Hutchison, Kay Bailout Hutchison. He may drop She will win if people come out and vote. Absolutely, absolutely. There's if we no doubt just, there'll be some if, election fraud, but it's not in every county. If we figuratively and literally just tap on our neighbor's shoulders and ask them, hey, at least are you registered to vote and tell them about Denver Medina, get a button, go on the website. The importance of that button right there, Alex, I can't tell you every day. People ask me about that. Who's Denver Medina? And they want to know. They want to hear about it. I'm convinced that after the 06 election with 1.3 million independent voters, we had the Ron Paul revolution occur in 07, 08. I believe in my heart there are 2 million people in Texas that are ready to press that electronic fraud button for Deborah Medina and make it work, though. Make that button work. 
Get your precincts out there. Get your precinct conventions going. Become precinct chairs. And well, regardless, we win because with a strong showing, and she may win with a strong showing. You now have it moving to the states, which is the real battle plan to beat the new world order. Right. The feds have been seized by offshore banks. We we take the states back. It's over. That's right. And Texas can lead the way. I would like. It's just to- like Copenhagen. When people said we couldn't beat it. Exactly. If you just have the will to win, you got the truth on your side. You can't be stopped. Alex, right here, this highway that goes by your office. I'm encouraging.